Let's discuss this, uh, get some opinions now from radio and TV host Karen Turk and reality TV star and doctoral student Ryan Beckett. Welcome to you both guys. Um, come to you first, uh, Ryan. Why do you think people should be punished for, in essence, pe mm -hmm. some people would say they're just wearing a costume to a party? Well, I think that you have to be sensitive to the actual group that you, the people are dressing up as. Rather than listening to ourselves, we should listen to the group that's being dressed up as. And I think that that's an important thing. And I think that kids, universities, professors, they don't have to be tone deaf. And they can actually listen to the actual group and listen from them actually what's offensive or not offensive. And I think that's the right way to approach these issues. Okay, same question to you, Karen. Is it fair to punish students' Halloween costumes? I mean, you would have thought this is an occasion when people are going there in a positive spirit to have fun. It's going way too far, and this entire PC culture is just out of control. I mean, I have long blonde hair. You know, I've been told that I look like Barbie. Am I going to be offended if somebody comes to a party dressed like me? Not at all. Does it change anything? No. Um, you know, if somebody's offended, I think you should have to need to try to be sensitive and not offend people. But I don't know how this has gone so far on these college campuses that now we're going to call people out on Halloween. Talk about ruining a holiday. Uh, Ryan, does, is it, this is an important element, I think. Um, you talked about offence being caused. Is it, does there need to be an intention to cause offence? If someone goes there and they're not intending to cause any offence, but they cause offence, does that mean they've crossed the line? Well, I, I actually think that Karen and I can find some common ground here. I, I think that free speech is one of the things that our country holds near and dear. And Berkeley University, for example, used to be the ex prime example of free speech. And now they've censored Ann Coulter, even Bill Maher, a liberal. He's called people out. So I agree with Karen when it comes to the costumes that you know, we got to be careful here. And we, we really got to get this right. I think that there can be a balance that's struck between being sensitive to a group not going too far beyond the pale and to actually still preserve some level of free speech. And I, I do agree with Karen, it has gotten a little out of hand and we need to be real careful about that. And w how would you respond to that, uh, Karen? Because obviously we don't want people going to you know, public events and using the opportunity basically to you know, offend certain ethnic minorities or, or regardless of what group they're from, to, to cause them offence and get away with it. But then some people might not intend any, any harm. Well, and you can look at this, you can take this to the other level, and I'm really happy to hear Ryan say this, you know, being someone on the other side of the aisle, and I think we have to stop being so sensitive. I mean, I've been told before that me wearing a Make America Great Again hat is offensive. So where do we draw the line? I think that's where we have a very clear problem. You know, and somebody coming to a party with blackface, I understand, I think we all know at this point that that's offensive, but if you go back 30 years ago, even if people were offended by it back then, they didn't talk talk about it the way that they do today. And I'm glad that we have some guidelines and that people are speaking up when they're offended. But we also can't take it to the level where we just say, oh, well, you know, your Donald Trump hat offends me, so therefore you can't wear that. And what scares me about this topic is I feel like when we just say Halloween costumes and we have college students talking about what's offensive, we really don't even know where the guidelines are anymore because we're living in this PC culture that sometimes really doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, and I just want to put, perhaps if I may indulge myself here, an example to Ryan, show how difficult it is to make an assessment. I mean, uh, comedians like to impersonate people, and I think there's a situation now where maybe white comedians are afraid to impersonate black people, although it's just a visual clue, I would have thought. Let's, let's talk specifically Halloween. So if a white person wants to dress up as Freddy Krueger, no problem. They stick on, you know, the appropriate uh, attire. What if they want to be someone like Candyman? Now, I think it was Tony Todd was the actor who... You know, a black man. If you want to just play a famous black, you know, horror character, how on earth will people understand who you are without that visual clue? I think it's a great question. I, I think that personally, I would probably just stay away from it because you have to ask your, yourself the question is the squeeze worth the juice? Um, but for example, say I wanted to play Michael Jackson, would I be in trouble for that? And how do I dress up in that kind of costume? And that's why I, I 
tend to agree and find common ground with Karen is that you know comedians are sometimes being censored and, and they really help move uh, social issues down the line and, and us talking about race what's offensive what's not offensive free speech the fact that we're even having this conversation to me is is great and it's a great question um, I tend to is one of those things you just kind of leave it alone um, I went to undergraduate at Florida State University and the NCAA was cracking down on mascots and we had a Native American mascot the Seminole Indian tribe and the Seminole Indian tribe told the NCAA they didn't want us to get rid of our mascot. They thought that we did it in a respectful way. They actually penned a letter to the NCAA um, asking us uh, to be continued to allow to do it and actually is one of our largest boosters for the Florida State Seminoles. So that's an example where academia, the actual group that's being used as a mascot, can find some common ground too. And it's giving, I think, some good PR for the Seminole Indian tribe. And we have a guy who's not an Indian that runs out to the, on the football field before a football game and throws a spear. And we have found some common ground and, and I guess it goes back to the intent of the representation. Yeah, and it's very difficult to kind of, you know, d decipher what someone's intent is at the time. Karen, um, I don't think there's any doubt that discrimination uh, occurs in every country around the world. And there's a lot of racial discrimination. And is that part of the problem now that we've got to a point in time where it's, it's a reflex action from people who, you know, have been discriminated against before they even like assess a situation? It's like, OK, you can't do that. You're being offensive with, without really assessing the individual cases. Yeah, I, I do think so. And, and it's another thing that I, you know, I wish we could just embrace people for who they are and that we could not have the racial division that we have in this country. And I've been told before that it's really easy for me to say that sitting back as a Caucasian woman in America. But, you know, for me, I think the more emphasis we place on race and the more we talk about the division, the harder it is to come together. And I look forward to a day in America where we can embrace everybody for who they are and hopefully be able to kind of take race out of the equation. But, you know, as a conservative and as somebody that's on the right side of the aisle, I do truly believe that the left side of the aisle and the Democrats have used race very divisively. And it's gotten us to this PC point that we're at today. And uh, hopefully we can find a way around it because now that we're censoring Halloween costumes, it doesn't look like it's getting much better. Uh, the big question to me is if you're going to punish people for being offensive and maybe it was intended, who, dis who decides this? I just want to give you an example, if, again, if I may, Ryan. This is a real one. This was a UK TV boss. I think it was an ITV executive dressed up as the, the Saudi executioner of Jamal Khashoggi, the journalist, for a Halloween party. This was last year, including holding a, a, a severed hand. Um, a lot of people found that really poor taste. Now, who decides if that person should be punished, lose their job, be fined? Yeah, that's tough. I mean, it, you get to a polarizing issue with that. I mean, that's freedom of speech, journalism, and, and he was executed in a, a, an embassy in a, a NATO country. And I, I think that, you know, there was a comedian, uh, Kathy Griffin, she got in trouble, and I'm sure Karen would agree with me on this. She got basically blackballed because she showed a severed head of our president. And everyone, for the most part, condemned her on it, and she had to go away for a while. So I think that you can go too far in terms of something that's offensive and divisive, uh, even for a comedian. So I think you just got to thread the needle and you got to be respectful and make sure, like I said, I go back to the intent. I, and I agree with you, it's hard to judge the intent of someone, but I, I think that if the intent is good, usually I believe and I hope like Karen, that it will be received well and we won't go too far in the politically correct atmosphere. Yeah, Karen, things have, have changed a lot even during my lifetime. I'm middle-aged and uh, it, the world's a new place and it seems like America is like kind of right at the forefront of this sensitivity. Who, who's driving this change in perception of what's culturally acceptable? Is it, is it the media? Is it coming from uh, particular rights groups? What, what, how, where's it coming from? I mean, I do, I personally feel that a lot of it is coming from the Democratic left, and I felt this way for a long time, but I also feel that we're also now being driven by our kids, and we're being driven by this millennial generation, and I can speak for that as a parent, 
our children actually feel very differently than I think a lot of us did growing up. And I think we kind of have to take a cue from the younger generation, but they have, have been very influenced by the Democratic left. And there is a shift in America right now. And I, you know, I don't like it. I'm not crazy about what's happening, but they are going to be the future leaders of America. And one of the things that I think will be very interesting to see that if this changes is as these millennials come into their own and they become the financially driving force and the economically driving force in America, it'll be interesting to see that if a lot of them shift to capitalism, because a lot of them are talking about socialism right now, and it sounds like a great idea, but I don't know if they're going to feel the same way when they're taxpayers. So that's going to remain to be seen. And I, and I think some of these social issues may shift as this millennial generation gets a little bit older and as they get more involved in the workforce. And final question to Ryan, if I may. Uh, I want to talk about freedom of speech because it's one of the greatest things a lot of people say about the United States. But also, some say it's, it's something of a weakness that can be exploited by people. It's, it's a country where people feel free to completely character assassinate the leader of the country, the president. Um, is this an attack, this you know, policing of how people dress up? Is that, is that an attack on freedom of expression? I do think it's somewhat of, a, of an attack on freedom of ex expression. I'm more on the left side uh, of the aisle, and I do think it's, a, it's an attack. I mean, I think that it's important to question those people in power, whether it's a Republican or a Democrat in office. I think it's important to have an adversarial press that's asking tough questions and not lay up questions. I think it's important. And our freedom of speech, uh, journalism, all of that is something that you know any democracy should, should hold up and, and, and really respect. And we should be able to have freedom of speech and question the people in power, no matter if it's someone from the left or the right, in my opinion. OK, guys, uh, I think we've uh, pretty much covered all the bases. I really appreciate your company this evening. Radio TV host Karen Turk there and reality TV star and doctoral student Ryan Beckett. It's been a pleasure.